We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability or pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars past and present have been given and taken away. Let us remember those from the villages of Welton, Donholm, Scothen, Hackthorn and Spridlington who made the ultimate sacrifice in World War I and World War II. From World War I we remember Hedley Baldwin, John W. Baldwin, John Bates, Harry Cottingham, Robert Goodwin, George Grantham, Walter Graves, Richard Harvey, Arthur Hodson, Fred Hodson, Arthur Mason, James Perkins, George Tinker, Percy Twell, William Vassey, Edward W. Almond, George Dodsworth, John H. Harding, James W. Simon, Charles E. Vickers, Edward Waby, Albert R. Watton, George H. Creasy, Fred Portus, Harold Portus, Harry Andrew, Bertram Bratton, Robert Brian Craycroft, Edward Alec Green, Harry Linley, Arthur Moore, Fred Popple, Frank Shillito Riggle, Ernest Spur, George Upfold, John Wood, George Edward Brewer, Herbert Franklin, George Albert Mountcastle, Harry Wilkinson, Wilkinson H, Wilkinson W. And from the Second World War, Leslie Everton, George Farmery, Herman Reed, Jack Andrew, Dennis Braithwaite, John Dixon, Richard Heavens, Reginald Hannath Clark, Frederick Charles Clark, and Michael Stritch Hutton. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields.
Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be with you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. It is Christmas Eve. The snow is falling and the earth is as hard as iron. A young boy and his mother are alone in their forested cabin, safe from the icy cold. And safe, they believe, from the enemy soldiers hiding in the countryside. As Fritz stokes the coals in the fireplace, he hears someone tapping gently at the door. His mother slowly opens the door to find a group of American soldiers. They are lost, and one has been wounded. For a moment, her mind races as to know what to do. She thinks of Fritz, and she thinks of execution, the punishment for helping the enemy. In another second, she brushes aside her fears and invites the soldiers into her house. She does not speak English, and it is clear they speak no German, but they are able to converse in broken French. The soldiers settle into the warmth of the cabin, and as Fritz places more wood on the fire, there is a loud and sharp knocking at the door. He sees the deep fear in his mother's eyes. And the cabin falls silent and still. Even more slowly, more cautiously this time, she opens the door. And her fears are realised. German soldiers stand in front of her. It is so very likely that if they show her no mercy, she will be shot for harbouring the Americans, even if it has only been for a few minutes. The young Fritz watches her very closely as she steps outside. And in a calm voice, she tells these soldiers that she will serve them a hot dinner. But as it is Christmas Eve, she has guests. She asks the soldiers to leave their guns in the shed because even though they might not like her visitors, Christmas Eve should be a night of peace. And entering the cabin again, she takes the Americans' guns and hides them away in the back room. The German soldiers having honoured her request, step inside. The young men look at each other. Although they are at war, nothing is said. 
As Fritz passes one of the German soldiers a hot drink, another, a medic, crosses the room and begins to work on dressing the wounds of the injured American. As the medic finishes binding his enemy's wounds, Fritz's mother invites them to sit down to eat. Fritz watches his mother as she opens her Bible and reads from it. And after reading from it, she closes it and quietly declares that there will be at least one night of peace in this war. Christmas night in the Arden forest. After a good night's rest, the soldiers say their goodbyes to each other. The German soldiers tell the Americans which direction their camp is in and give them a compass to help them find their way. This amazing account is a powerful story of love. And it's a story of parental love, a mother's love which will extend to young men who are fighting a war, a mother's love which will risk all, even the safety and future of her own son, to do what is good for those young men at that time. It's a mother's love that brings peace. It is the same love which radiates from the book that she reads from. And in our Bible reading, we hear those words of Jesus, the one who came to bear our lot and experience our life, the one who enjoyed the world as we enjoy it and to endure it as we endure it, the one who left the abundance of heaven in order to identify fully with us and to reach out with loving arms to us, the one who was willing to be tried and crucified unjustly simply to tell us just how much God loves us. The one willing to lay down his life on a cross for us, for us all, and for the world. And Jesus says no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And in Jesus we see that sacrificial love of God that will stop at nothing until all God's children have been saved by that very love. And as we reflect today, as we recognize something of the tragedy of human life, as we remember those who sacrifice themselves in the face of war, we remember the sacrifice for family and friends to whom they did not return. We remember by the poppies we wear and the hope of peace we share, that great hope of never again. We remember that living in love and peace is God's plan for us. We remember that love wins. So let us share in that love today. Of course, this year we are unable to gather at our memorials and in our church buildings as we usually would. But remembering the sacrifice of those who gave of themselves. And when we think of God who gave everything of himself for us in love. Perhaps we can ask ourselves, what sacrifice are we being called to make today? And perhaps we can ask God where he might want and need us to help bring peace. Peace to our homes, to our communities, to our world. Perhaps we can ask God to show us how we can help share love with those around us, especially at this time. And we can do it for the love of friends, for the love of our community for the love of our world and in the love of God, who loves each one of us so dearly and who will stop at nothing until we have been saved by the power of his love. Perhaps you might be wondering whatever happened to Fritz. Well, years later, he was reunited with two of the American soldiers and he said this. Many years have gone since that bloodiest of all wars, but the memories of that night in the Ardennes never left me. The inner strength of a single woman who by her wits and intuition prevented potential bloodshed and taught me the practical meaning of the words, goodwill towards mankind. I remember mother and those seven young soldiers who met as enemies and parted as friends right in the middle of the Battle of the Bulge.
Dear Father God, thank you for all soldiers who have fought and sacrificed their lives for our freedom and safety. We pray for the families who still have to deal with their loss of their loved ones. We pray for your comfort and peace for them, especially at this time of remembrance. Thank you for your safety and security that we enjoy in our country. But we also remember the countries in the world where there are still wars taking place. We pray for wisdom and compassion for the leaders as they strive to bring peace in our war-torn countries. We also pray for soldiers who are currently serving and all others in the front line, helping to keep the peace in other countries. We pray for protection for them and for peace for their families. Finally, Lord, we thank you that whatever battles we have faced in the past or still face today, you are always with us giving us the courage and strength to carry on. When we wear our poppies this year, help us to remember the sacrifice of all who fought in, the, in all the wars, inspired by the sacrifice of your son Jesus, to give us all a life of freedom and peace. Amen. Amen. Most holy God and Father, Hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror or conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and the welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope and keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.